Hey everyone, how you doing today? Again, we are on with Omar, the real estate entrepreneur. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, Michael. How are you? Oh, I had a great time talking about focus in episode one. This one's going to be interesting because it's about how do you know you got a good deal, right? You have been gracious enough over the last couple of weeks to walk us through flips. You're at your Airbnb properties. We've talked about those, your long-term hold. So, man, when you look at a deal, you get a phone call, you're belly to belly with the seller. How do you know you are getting a good deal? You got to know your market. That's number one. You have to know the um, information. Well, let's, talk, let's you break go that, to disappointment. You have. Yeah, let's, let's break that down ahead, a little bit, right? Know your market, learn your market. Okay. I say it over and over, but let's really break that down. Uh, what was what was the last house uh, or last deal you put together? What What was it? Uh, the last deal I put together was a, uh, a flip that we're closing this week. Okay. And so that was uh, a week and a half ago. So let's talk about that one, right? You get the phone call okay. or somebody passes you a lead. What did you do first? First thing I wanted to find out um, what their motivation for selling was. Okay. That's number one. Uh, so you, okay. You asked some questions. Number one, and listen. why? Yep. Yep. Ask questions. Listen, why? Then I wanted to find out um, when their next availability was, which I told them either Tuesday or Thursday, my schedule. Mm -hmm. I wanted to meet them. And uh, we met. Then when we sat down at the table, actually, we met, walked the property. We sat down at the table. But before I got there, mm -hmm. Let me, let me tell you guys, before I got there, I've already ran my numbers exactly. on what the after repaired value is going to be, what the market is right now, and what, you know, if it's a trashed house, what that value was going to be there. I hadn't seen it, but just based on my numbers, based on the square footage, location, um, you know, how close it is to the freeway, the year built, three bedroom, two bath, all of the specifics of the property, I already knew. Okay, yeah. walking into it. So I kind of had an idea already. Yeah, so let's okay, try But to that put, only comes with you knowing your market. Yeah, so let's put a framework around this. So, um, okay. So what was the house? Give me just the raw stats. How many bedrooms, square footage, single story? You know, give me the raw stuff. Uh, single story, three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. Attached. Uh, built in the late 80s. Okay. Attached garage, yes. Okay. On a quarter Built in acre? the late 80s. Yep, sorry. On a, uh, yeah, 18,000 square foot lot. Oh, okay. So a little less than uh, than a half an acre. Okay. In, right. in, in our area, that's just pretty common. Okay. It's on septic. Okay. Um, and other than that, location-wise, it's close to the freeway. It's about five minutes from the freeway. Okay, so, okay. so you know the raw stats. Now you go to your systems yep. and experience. You go, okay, what's what... What's the range this could go for? So uh, I'm curious, when you look that up, do you remember what kind of the highs and lows were at the time? Yeah, 100%. Um, highs were probably about 285,000. Okay. Um, middle is probably 270. Okay. And low is, you know, probably 250, you know, 245. And again, those are those are ARVs, right? ARV ranging from a low end of 250 to a high of 285, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm now conservative you know, too. Okay. Right. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now you know the square footage. You've done enough flips. You probably have a rough estimate. It's 40, 50, 80 bucks a square foot. I mean, you probably have something you pencil in, right? So you're like, For okay, sure. right? So, I mean, I don't know. Let's Let's say it's 50 grand. Right. So you know where you where you could be. You know what your repair is likely to be, plus or minus a little bit. What do you do, if anything, after that? Uh, depending, obviously, um, you know, after I show up, yeah, that's going to dictate a lot. Yeah. That's going to be your next step. I mean, you're basing these numbers off of just pure Speculation. Um, square footage. <laughs> yeah. You haven't seen it. You don't know how much money is going to need to fix it. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. So you, again, folks, he's doing his math. He's doing his numbers, but again, he's not set on anything, right? Cause you got to go see it at no. this point. Right. Okay. It's, it's a gauge. And, and for those people that are out there virtually doing this, which I have as well, I did a couple of them yesterday. I, I'm here and a couple of guys went out looking at some properties for me that I'm going to be buying. And I just did a FaceTime. Mm. So you'll start getting good at understanding what, where the market's at if you study your market and you know what's happening. Mm -hmm. In this case, I wanted to go see the property because it was a family member of an old client that I kept in touch with. You know, some of my shows here talked about the database aspect of it, that people come to you for all aspects of real estate, not just to sell a house, but to, se to sell one, to buy one to give you advice, all that stuff. And this is what happens when you develop relationships. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit different of a deal, but I still go down that same road because I'm not going to stop uh, doing what works because it's someone I know mm -hmm. or it's someone that knows of me. I'm going to be as professional as I can be. And that's the direction. That's the foundation. You know what? Systems don't fail. People do. Mm. so create the system and that and, and keep going down that avenue okay that. so I once i got to the house i did the walkthrough you know i said hello and everything else good to see you awesome did the walkthrough took down my notes sat at the table gave them the three options or gave them two options market value on what we can get now but the house itself needs a lot of of work there's a lot of junk everywhere they weren't planning on wanting to leave or uh, take everything out so mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been show ready on the market for listing it for quite some time and they wanted it done quicker mm -hmm. so i gave them a breakdown of market value minus commission minus some repairs closing costs for a traditional buyer to live in this house okay mm -hmm. gave them their net number which was pretty good. Then I let them know about another avenue of no commissions, no closing costs, as is. I don't care about a little termite damage. I don't care about anything. Just I buy the home. I provide the solution for you. That's it. Remember, I already knew my number. Mm -hmm. So I came in at X knowing that 285 was probably the highest market value there in that area. Mm -hmm. I came in at 210. 210k and uh i'm going to share something with you it's not about the the price okay it's about what they're making in their pocket mm. it's about what they're making in their pocket forget about the price because if you focus on the price of the property they're gonna see it as like oh it's too low mm. focus on how much money they're making after their payoff that's the number because at the end of it, 210, 220, that doesn't matter. It's what they're making in their pocket after all expenses. So I was focusing on that, okay? Focusing on that avenue. And they wanted to make, I think, 90,000. Mm. And I think at 210, they were going to be making um, 85. Mm. And then they said, hey, will you do 90,000 in our pocket? Absolutely. I circled the 90K increase the price from 210 to 215 put it in escrow or they sign the contract because i was focusing on ninety thousand nice. dollars that they're making in their pocket yeah. psychology yes that is awesome and you listened right they didn't want to do this they didn't want to do and that I they did they didn't want the hassle right they wanted speed they wanted speed and a number you gave them both correct and correct. again you did all that work up front you were, that's what people I need to hear. That's what I talk about. It's you learn your market. You don't, you don't learn your market just by looking at Google street views and Zillow, right? It takes repetition and experience and, you know, learning. Cause you could have gone there and been surprised, right? Uh, you oh, know, maybe, sure. maybe it had a like huge, a lot of investors yeah. are, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe it had a huge a utility pole in the backyard or some other thing that was not obvious from, you know, simple research. Could have been across the street from a jail right. or, you know, who knows what, what it could have been. Right. Um, but yeah, people, yep. d like we said in number one, do the work. I, I suggest doing the work every day because 
it's it's repetition experience the only way omar can do this quickly now and i'm sure it took him five or ten minutes is because he's done it you know hundreds if not thousands of times now wouldn't you agree 100 percent agree yes that's amazing yes and again that when you left that let left that appointment you got in your car with the signed contract you were happy and they were happy yes they were extremely happy and remember guys you're providing a solution so and this is this is something that i'm going to share with you that is probably gonna um i'm not saying that it's going to happen or it's going to work for everybody but since this was a repeat client um if i make more money on this deal after i fix it up because it is going to be flipped and i make a little bit more than what i thought I'm going to send a nice check to that seller Nice. saying, you know what? Um, we made a little bit more money and I want to do, and I wanted to say, thank you. Here's an extra 5k. No investor is going to do that shit. No. Sorry. No, they just don't. Yeah. But the one that will always and guarantee you, he will refer me everyone. Oh, he'll tell he that story for years, <laughs> for years because of five grand that I'm probably going to give them, Michael, and I kind of already put it in my, um, you know, in, in my cost sheet yeah. that I'm going to give them a little extra because they came to me first. Yeah. And without them coming to me, I don't have a potential increase of profit of fifty five, sixty thousand dollars 60000 60K or 55, I'll take the 55, I'll give them the 5K and guess what's going to happen? They're going to be talking about me for years. Oh, yeah. There'll be nobody they know or family member that doesn't know that story. Everybody will. Exactly. Dozens or even hundreds. I want to use. People. I want to call Omar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, and you're a magician. You guys are all going to steal this. Yes. Exactly. Go ahead. I was going to say it. that. That's why you're the real estate entrepreneur, my friend. Uh, I get inspired to learn something uh, all the time. So uh, I appreciate you. I can't wait to talk about number three because we're going to talk about just over broke. Thanks, buddy. Oh, big. All right, man.